लेट एस गेट एवरीबडी हु इज अराउंड Let us see who all are here. Irma was waiting. Okay. Mita Shri, Madam has joined. My son has got me. Tanya, very good. There you are. Who else is there? Minali. 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 Manjuri also. Oh, Amit. Oh, Amit. Oh, Amit. Good to see you. Oh, Amit. Good to see you. Hey, Noor. Oh, Noor. Noor Ahiti. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Right. <laughs> Looks like it's photo only. <laughs> Nuri, let's see your face. Yes, yeah, yeah. Put on, like put this. on your, put on your cameras. Let us see everybody's face. We want to make sure everybody is cheerful. <laughs> Jigme, your face too. Ah, there, there. Jigme, acha. Show us his Jigme. Minali, Minali. <laughs> Manju. Hi, Manju. Oh, Manju. Yes, there you are. Oh, great. Vanda, Vanda. Great, great, great to see all of you. Jigme, Irma is trying to log on. Hi, Minali. Oh, Vanda. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Hi, madam. Hi, hi everybody. I'm Mitashri. Hello. Hello, David. Yeah. Um, hello, Nandita. Rajesh. Hi, Ahmed. Hi, hi, Nuri. How are you? Huh? I'm good here. Yeah. I wanted to tell you that I'm oh, uh, a no. colleague of mine. Uh, Deepak Mon. Um, so we are involved in a community. Hi, Manju. David Mon is coming in soon. Hello, Vanda. How are you? Okay. Ah, there, there. Welcome, welcome. I'll take a banana on next time. Let us see who else is there. David Monk is coming on in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. Very good. Now let me uh, let me welcome you all. Uh, great to see all your faces, and you all look uh, well. You, I hope all your families and your loved ones in your homes are well. Uh, since we are not a very large group, we we are likely to be 20, 25 people from various hubs. We, this webinar has not been advertised uh, uh, as a public event. It is a sort of a basically a knowledge for change consortium, uh, past and present. And, uh, you know, some of uh, uh, you know each other from your own cohort. Some of you do not know each other. But we thought, Bud and I thought this would be a good chance to connect, say hello, but also mm -hmm. discuss a little bit as to what you are all doing how the hubs are thinking of uh, or already responding to the pandemic. Uh, one of the, so, so we, we have requested um, some people from different parts of the region uh, to, to kick off with an in comment on some of the questions that we shared with you. But uh, the idea is that we hear uh, what different hubs are doing 
you know, last night, uh, last night by India time, um, uh, the, there was a Thank webinar you. that Bud hosted along with Suryani, which was primarily covering Canada, Cuba, Colombia, South Africa, um, Italy, and parts of Ireland. Uh, some of those people may uh, still want to join because it is uh, at 1030 at night in, in uh, Victoria and uh, you know, uh, late other places are a bit uh, uh, later in the night there. Um, so, so first of all, warm welcome. Great to see all of you. Great to see your smiling faces. And uh, it's in this in this period of the pandemic, uh, it it has affected all our countries. It has affected all our regions. It has uh, made us, uh, you know, home, you know, lockdown in our home. Um, some of us are still working from home or trying to work from home. Um, our institutions have expected us to do work from home, and um, and uh, but we, you know, we have our families, we have our kids, we have elderly people at home, and it's not, it's 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 a new experience. It's a it's a new 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 reality, and uh, and uh, the pandemic actually uh, is posing some very challenging questions, which are relevant to the work we do as Knowledge for Change Consortium. Um, the, the, the first thing I am learning from this pandemic is that it is uh, uh, pushing the primary action locally. It is the local organizations, local actors, local governments, local leaders, local communities, which are actually dealing with it first hand. And uh, their knowledge, their experience, their wisdom is what is holding us all together. And uh, so the significance of local has been highlighted in this, which in a way is the strength of community-based participatory research. It links macro frameworks and theories to local context, local experience. It builds on local knowledge, on local context as well. So, so that's a, the second is that, um, that solutions are not uh, ready-made. So, so, you know, you can't import solutions from anywhere. <laughs> you, you have to innovate your own solutions in your context. Um, some are doing restricted mobility, some are doing um, total lockdown, some are doing testing, some are doing, uh, you know, distancing. But, but one or two principles may be there. You know, wash your hand, but depends on how much water you have. Who has the water to wash hands? Who doesn't have? Yeah. Or maintain distance. Well, great. But if 20 people live in 150 square feet room as migrant labor, they actually maintain distance by going out of the house, not inside the house. Yeah. So, so you have to create local solutions, local innovations, and common principles, but local solutions. And third, most importantly, I think that uh, there is a requirement for the solution to the pandemic, not just immediately, but going forward to think of new ways of living, new ways of organizing our lives, our work, our institutions, and perhaps even our planet. Because uh, this is one of the first situations uh, in several centuries where the whole world is affected. We have had wars, we have had other plagues, other famines, other uh, pandemics, which affected parts of the globe. But this one, everywhere. And the reason it has is because we have been, uh, you know, trying to find solutions in extreme globalization framework. So more globalized the society, 
more is the impact. Our in our country, we see in India the regions or the parts of the country which are less globalized, which are more rural, more local, are less effective. All the big cities in all our countries are are effective. Well, that's where global movement of trade and people uh, happens. Uh, so so local. Um, Local wisdom, local knowledge, local innovation, uh, partnerships, collaboration, bringing institutions of different types together, and dreams for a new way of organizing our lives and work. So those are some of the messages that I am sort of hearing and thinking from the work we are doing. But I think we want to hear everybody today. Uh, and uh, so, so the way it is structured, it's not a big group, as I said. The idea is that we will, um, we will, we have requested a few of you, um, and to kick it off. And my my co co moderator, you know, uh, or perhaps all of you know my my colleague uh, Nandita. Uh, Nandita uh, will moderate uh, with me. We will hear four of you first. Then we'll hear people from other hubs, and then we'll have a common conversation. The idea is to ask simple question, which we circulated. Uh, what are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, what your your you and your hub is trying to do something in your context, or what are you thinking we should do uh, in future together? So those are those are ideas. The people initially will speak for six seven minutes, uh, but then we will have everybody join in, and I I am going to hand over the mic uh, now to. Nandita. Thank you, Rajesh Bhai. So good to see everybody. Irma, hi, Izawati. How are you? Um, so, uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to first, uh, you know, do a formal introduction of our four panelists and uh, briefly about what each hub is doing, so all of us know. But of course, there would be much more that each hub is doing that we haven't uh, we haven't heard about. Um, so I was frantically sending messages to say, what all have else have you done besides what we know? Uh, so uh, we would like to hear from everybody. So let me first begin by uh, introducing our panelists. We have our first panelist is uh, Muzaimi, Dr. Muzaimi Mustafa. Um, the most exciting bit of the introduction about Dr. Muzaimi is that by profession he is a physician, physician neuroscientist, and is an associate professor <laughs> in medical neuroscience at the School of Medical Sciences uh, at the Health Campus, USM Health Campus in uh, Kelantan. He was uh, a part of the second cohort and he leads the Malaysia K4C hub. Um, his batchmates have, uh, have shared with me that, you know, even though he was a medical professional, he understood CPPR very well and he's providing great leadership to their uh, hub. So we're really excited to have you with us, uh, Muzaimi. Um, the second panelist is uh, Dr. George Openjuru. Uh, he is the vice chancellor and the professor of education at Gulu University. Uh, he was formerly the Dean School of Distance and Lifelong Learning at the College of Education and External Studies at uh, Mekere University. Um, his uh, area of specialization and research is adult literacy education and lifelong learning. And uh, as part of his university community engagement, George is active in supporting uh, civil society organizations that are engaged in the promotion of adult education in Uganda. And uh, the, he's also the chairperson of Uganda Adult Education Network. Um, he is a partner in the UNESCO Chair on Social Responsibility in Higher Education and the Community University Engagement. And uh, he's a coordinator of the UNESCO Chair of Lifelong Learning, Learning Youth and Work, Gulu University. I met George last year in May in Tanzania and then uh, last year again in, uh, in Delhi. And both times I remember being absolutely fascinated with his work and uh, at the university. Um, so we're very excited to have you with us, uh, George. Uh, Wahida is the Vice Rector of Education in uh, Sunan Ampel uh, University in Surabaya. Uh, therefore, um, she's also, uh, she also directly becomes advisor for the K4C uh, of the university. Uh, she's been teaching and using CPPR in several ways. I'll mention two uh, very different but very interesting. One was, uh, you know, she initiated a gender mainstreaming work in her university where they formed the first gender policy for the university. 
and uh, you know community based project for promoting concepts of shared parenting uh, designed to support the education of children she works relentlessly to promote cppr within the university and the ministry of religious affairs of indonesia so uh, yeah and the, the hub has uh, the focus of the hub of their hub has been community outreach gender equality and collaborative research uh, they have been running uh, you know uh, workshops and trainings twice a year for students and uh, encouraging them to use cppr methodologies in their research and their students have been working extensively in uh, several districts in east java uh, the fourth uh, panelist is uh, dr rita venugopal uh, my dear friend Rita, she is also the head and dean of the physical education department of Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University, and also the director uh, for the Center for Women's Studies. Um, now that is the home for our key for C Hub in Raipur, Chhattisgarh. Uh, the hub is called Sangwari, which means friend uh, in the local language, and implying a network or a community of friends. And the focus of this hub is to advance the agenda of community-based participatory research in the framework of supporting SDG5. Uh, the hub is now running its uh, second offering of the certificate course in CBPR. And, uh, and the knowledge that they are producing is also informing uh, you know, state level policy making. Um, we will hear more from, uh, from Rita. But uh, thank you very much for being here and giving us your time. Um, I would like to first uh, now in, invite George to uh, give us his uh, his opening uh, comments and uh, reflections. Welcome, George. You can unmute yourself. Uh, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Andita, for that uh, elaborate uh, introduction. I am actually happy to to be in this uh, webinar, seeing so many faces and uh, names, which makes it easy to identify people. It's quite a very nice experience. And um, yeah, um, happy to meet all of you. It's actually a very difficult time right now and the disruptions somehow took people by surprise. And uh, for us at Tuguru and in Uganda, um, we were, actually not expecting it because when the whole of this started in in china we thought it would be a chinese issue when it started moving to italy we say no i think these are for for them chinese european americans and uh, then before we knew it was in india then we said oh wait a minute uh, maybe then people started flying in from dubai then we remembered i remembered oh, we are so linked to Dubai. Most of the cases came from Dubai. Fortunately, we locked them early. So uh, before we realized, the president announced, stay home 14 days. So well, two weeks is not a big time. Uh, we just closed the university. I was not even in Gulu, closed the university and we did not otherwise. Our normal, we did not prepare for it. Our normal operations of the hub was still, you know, completing the, 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 the mentorship training, which was still going on. I was still following up on the research activities that is going on and trying to reconstitute ourselves and begin to see what we can do this, uh, how we can proceed with this operation uh of, of personalizing the hub and starting hub activities with the ngos that we are collaborating with uh, in um, in gulu here uh, david monk um is one of is actually the the most active hub coordinator and i'm happy he's here he will be giving us the detail but again as a university having sent the student home and again still yesterday i learned some students were hiding in the hostels and uh Again, now with this social uh, social media, they were, they were asking us, what are you doing? Why are you leaving students? We told them that we, we had told the students to go home. So that now is another issue which I will need to attend to today. But uh, immediately, best part of our social responsibility, when we closed the university, we moved and joined what we call the district task force because 
there is the national task force um, headed by the prime minister with a regular uh, weekly, there so far has been almost 12 uh, address by the president himself to the nation. And then there is also the district task force. I send my staff there and they are participating and uh, we guide them. I send the staff from faculty of medicine, the department of public health to guide the task force uh, in how to respond to these issues. But there are two types of response that uh, the, our faculty guided the task force, uh, which also I think uh, the national task force is also responding to. And some of some members of this task force, uh, Const Constantine, uh, who are active, are members of our hub, members of our hub. So I can say indirectly, the hub is making a contribution already. Uh, to the task force in trying to ensure that this disease uh, does not land in Gulu because it has not yet uh, arrived here. We have been having cases of people moving in and they were being checked and all of them have been cleared. So anybody who enters, the last, the latest case was a truck driver that came from Kenya because they are still allowed to move goods. So the truck driver, the community, Mobilize. Some of my staff also went to ensure that he's taken back to Entebbe where there are facilities to take care of them because that one was discovered to be infected. So the university is doing that, uh, participating in the task force. We contributed POSHO for people who have been doing, uh, uh, people who, who work every, you know, they get the, the money every day. Uh, in, in, in our one of our local language, they call it a Maria Lero, which translates to food for today. If they don't work, the following day there is no food. They work the money today and they eat it today. Then tomorrow they work again and eat it. The border border riders, the tomato dealers, and what have you, those ones, uh, the, the saloon workers. So because they now can't go to work and they don't have uh, farms like I do, I can go to my farms and invest uh, cassava. I did that. I had a cassava garden. I just cleared the whole garden and brought it home. So I say, even if the lockdown goes for six months, I have food to eat, at least for that period. They don't have those ones. So we gave food to the task force, and many people made contribution at the district level and at the national level. Contributions are coming. The university made its part. We gave 750 kilograms of potion to add. Others gave cooking oil so that it is distributed to these market women who don't have farms and they are just uh, you know, depending on that food. So the food is being distributed to them and given to them. Uh, we also give them a vehicle so that it can help to move uh, people, pregnant women, and move task force members to do different locations to study the situation. So basically, that is what we are doing. And um, yeah, we are watching the space. So far, not so bad. In the country as a whole, if I can say, um, we, have, we have 53 cases, 55 now, uh, of confirmed affected people who have been testing positive. About 32 have already been released, and uh, a few are left. And the, the number of identification every day is going down, what we call the flat cup. So that is what we are doing. Otherwise, the university is closed, no activity, except members of the top management. We are going on. Uh, as to what the, 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 the KFOC can do, uh, we will have to then see what comes out of this meeting because partly I wanted to know what others are doing in their country, uh, in their regions, and see how we can also penetrate. Otherwise, for now, People are staying home, no burial, no church activities. I'm, a colleague of mine lost a wife. I'm supposed to go and bury, still debating, because they're saying there must be family members. So it's a hard time. Basically, that is what it is. But uh, it's good that we are here. We need to share experience of uh, how we can do things under this restricted movement. And this, of course, one of the most important things I've realized is that there is an up, uh, up growth of uh, online meetings like this one. 
I have done very many. Most of the projects have gone online. Uh, we were got without online learning activities, so a few lecturers are contacting their staff online. Uh, research activities, publication activities are all going online. So those online activities seems not to have been affected. But physical movement is the one which uh, uh, is a problem. And uh, as, 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 as Rajesh puts it, the village is gone. I, I, I said I, I am free to move. I go to the village, this thing is not affecting them. Maybe the, 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 the global centers, what we call the, the global capital, that are, have global connections, are the ones that are affected. Possibly a new, what we call a new paradigm is developing of how people should work. Work from home, stay with family, work online, connect virtually and stay away from each other is I think uh, is a development that is taking up uh, is growing significantly so for now let me stop here but uh, I'm, I'm I would be glad to to listen to how all of you are responding from all the different sections of the world uh, in this uh, rather shocking uh, development thank you very much Thank you, George. Thank you. Excellent. I'll come back uh, to David and others uh, in a minute. Uh, let me now invite uh, Muzaimi uh, from uh, USM Hub. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rajesh. Thank you, Nandita, for the kind introduction of my background. Hi, everybody. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm Muzaimi from Malaysia. Um, and just before we started this conversation, when I logged in, um, I had Rajesh, Wahida, and Anita and Josh, and Shuman, and Jigme online. And I did briefly mention the current scenario of COVID-19 in Malaysia. Uh, relative to 2 million other individuals who've been affected, as we all know, uh, globally, Malaysia, I would say, had been quite lucky in our second wave of COVID-19 uh, at, at present. I, I feel that the government overall had responded early and aggressively uh, when they first imposed uh, Movement Control Order, MCO, from the 18th of March. Um, and the trigger for the main bulk or cluster for the cases were identified very early involving nearly 10,000 individuals uh, who had initially gathered in one location in the state in the capital city of the country Kuala Lumpur and that was it was really a, a sort of a quick wake-up call uh, and the trigger also came from Brunei first case uh, despite COVID-19 starts in China back in late December as you all know they had the case in Brunei, the first case in Brunei, uh, in the first week of March, and that individual returned from Malaysia at that gathering, at the cluster which was held in the capital city. So it was, it was really a nation-to-nation -nation knowledge sharing that initiated and moved the government as quickly where the public health and Ministry of Health uh, consulted our Malaysia Security Council. Uh, has always been there anyway, but their role become more prominent uh, since the 18th of March when we first imposed the movement control order. We are now in our fifth week of that MCO, and in that period, uh, we had, at least when I say we, I'm referring to what the government at least had done, um, is uh, mm -hmm. issuing economic uh, rescue package. Um, to my knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. they've released 10 billion ringgit until yesterday uh, under this economic package. And it covers pretty much everyone, including those who are unemployed, to those who had been employed in the private sector but um, you know, uh, had, had to leave their job as a result of this. Um, and I'm also aware that industry partners, especially the banking uh, sectors, who are given a leniency on many lenders, on loans and, and uh, all the repayments, everything has been put on hold 
for up to six months, uh, which is really a relief uh, to the whole population. Uh, the new challenge we have uh, in terms of um, approach and reaching out to all walks of life in the country uh, is uh, categories of individuals who just return from abroad. Um, so they, they are sort of a new, new group of individuals that we had to quarantine the moment they step uh, foot back into the country. And then we also have a challenge with the under-recognized uh, foreign workers uh, and also Malaysian workers who work in Singapore um, on a regular basis. They work in Singapore, but they live in, in uh, Johor Bahru, which is the immediate state in the country. And Singapore, as you know, having a real issue with new cases, uh, se more severe cases of COVID-19 at the moment compared to us. And then we have many uh, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, uh, uh, workers or Indian workers uh, who were previously not screened. So now they, they represent a, a new cohort of individuals that the government are very aggressive in identifying new cases. So one of the outcome from the MCO is uh, an extended MCO for several regions where they identify new cases uh, more than 10 in a day. So they, they become uh, you know, a cluster where they give more attention. And the good thing about that, that move with this extended MCO is basically no movement whatsoever from where they live. Let's say it's a whole apartment of 1,000 residents and everybody stay where they are. Uh, food, all essentials have been supplied to them nonstop every single day. So they, their welfare is fully looked after. And I mentioned uh, at the beginning, before we start the webinar about the homeless people in the, you know and not just the urban poor but those who actually work but they're homeless uh, they all given a special uh, protection and their welfare is well looked after in fact uh, every now and again we get to see news we see them in a special place near a stadium and all that where they get fully housed fully fed uh, and everyone look happy and that's that's on the national ground in terms of healthcare i think Needless to say that we, everyone is doing all their best at the, not really a front line. The public is the front line, uh, not, not the healthcare workers. I think it's the wrong terminology. The, the, the front line is the public, it's us, those who are outside the hospital. The hospital who looked after the patients are the last line of defense because they are rescuing now. So the social isolation, the distancing is the first line. So the first line is uh, all of us, uh, the non-healthcare professionals. Um, it, where I'm based, uh, although we have a teaching university hospital, uh, we are not under the Ministry of Health. So we do not have to deal with the COVID-19 patients directly, but we support the hospitals uh, who are dealing, who have been assigned to look after COVID-19 patients. So we looked after the non-COVID-19 cases uh, and all the uh, PPE, uh, personal protection equipment, supplies, etc., cetera, are all been uh, supported by various agencies, not just the Ministry of Health. And I mentioned also before we start the webinar about the involvement of various uh, NGOs, those you know, we familiar with as well as the one that uh, never really involved before. We never knew about them, but everyone is involved. Uh, at university level, uh, we have a COVID-19 task force teams. I think similar to what Dr. Josh was saying to his university. And their role has been more than just identifying uh, steps uh, that the Ministry of Health is doing, but also helping university to number one, think about our teaching and learning innovations because things are moving into online. Uh, I must say that USM is the only university uh, that acted before even the Malaysian government acted with the MCO. Uh, we also take pride in continuing the teaching and learning uh, before everybody else, even before the Ministry of Higher Education Institute uh, SOP, but we had initiated our own SOPs. And uh, to date, all the teaching are already in place in all programs. Students who uh, stay in campus who did not leave for home are given full support. 
and now the I mean, Malaysian Security Council are addressing the issue on whether and when to let the students return mm -hmm. home safely. Now that uh, we are entering our third phase of uh, MCO, uh, it should end uh, on the 28th of April, so we shall wait what will be the decision after 20th of April uh, on what next in terms of our social distancing. Uh, the, for the K4C, uh, I must say that because USM, our institution response has been so overwhelming, uh, so it, it, it transgressed, you know, identity of community base, it transgressed K4C, everyone is involved. Even we've moved, we create our own uh, institutional fund where in the next three months, everyone uh, has their salary uh, contributing to that fund. And the fund is been channeled to the students, been channeled to healthcare staff, and been channeled for any other needs that emerge out of this new normal. Uh, I like to call it new normal that we all have to face. So, and last but not least before uh, I end, we are also uh, very proactive at rescheduling our academic calendar addressing all different undergraduate and postgraduate uh, needs uh, so that everyone is not too badly affected as a result of this adaptation to the new normal. And, and latest, the university are looking at a return to campus plan, return to campus plan post COVID-19. Uh, and we are also lucky the you know, Ministry of Higher Education released uh, um, calls for research grant proposition for post COVID-19 uh, planning, because we feel that that's, that's the most uh, unmet needs, that, you know, the new normal that needs to be redefined. So I think K4C Malaysia will probably be involved in that new normal and identify what's the new normal that the community is facing for us to contribute uh, more effectively. So on that note, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Muzaymi. Nandita, where are you? I'm here. Okay. So um, now uh, I would like to call uh, Wahida. Yeah, Wahida. Hey, thank you, Nandita. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, I would like to share our experience in Indonesia uh, in dealing with uh, COVID-19, especially what we do in our K4C hubs in our university. Um, I think as I mentioned before, uh, before we start the webinar, actually our government a bit uh, confused about the, the issue of COVID-19. As uh, George said that maybe this is the case of China, it's still not infected to Indonesia, but uh, after two months, uh, the Chinese case, then the, uh, the disease or the virus uh, coming uh, to our country. So the government actually uh, still a bit uh, confused what to do, whether to restrict uh, people, whether to do lockdown and everything. But uh, lastly, they make uh, some big cities in Indonesia, uh, but uh, also my city, uh, Surabaya, to have what we call it as PSBB, uh, Pembatasan Sosial Berskala Besar, or in English we can say that a strictly mobility of people in a big scale. So it's not uh, completely locked down because I think uh, the government uh, are afraid about the economic impact of, of the people who particularly living daily uh, for substitute uh, income like that. And then uh, our university, because of the confusion of the government, the action of the university actually a bit confused also uh, at the earlier. But we, our university, um, are brave enough to take decision to, to start lockdown uh, our university. So when the death case, the first death uh, of COVID-19 uh, announced by the government on the 11th of March uh, in, uh, in Indonesia, then three days after that, uh, our university took the decision to lock down uh, the university, uh, even though other university um, has not started uh, that decision. So uh, we asked students to, to live uh, in their house, um, but at that time we just started like two weeks lockdown 
and then if you, uh, if two weeks okay, then you can come back uh, to run the university uh, as usual. But in fact, after two weeks, uh, the university cannot start it because the, the situation, the whole situation in country uh, getting uh, worse, then uh, we extend the, the lockdown of, of the university uh, until now. So actually, um, I think it's almost six weeks uh, right now we have locked down the, the university. So at first we think about uh, our students, uh, should we ask them to go home or should we ask them just stay where they are uh, around the university? Because most of our students are coming from uh, village and other regions uh, of Surabaya. But then we decide the student need to go home because um, because of the length of the lockdown of the university, we know that we we try to do um, uh, studying uh, online, but but it's not easy to. Uh, we have uh, many cases for this. First, actually, uh, it's internet access is not uh, easy for every student. So how can we get the access uh, for them to, uh, to study uh, as well, to so study well uh, as usual? So this is the, the first issue that come out uh, in our university. So we ask um, uh, the government, uh, particularly internet provider like Telcom and Indosan to give uh, free uh, internet access for our student. We got that, but, but it's very small uh, data that the student uh, gets. So they need to spend their money also to buy uh, internet uh, data for, for access for studying. Uh, the second one, uh, because not every lecturer understand how to do to conduct uh, online teaching, then what our, uh, our university do is uh, try to make like a guidance for how you can use uh, online resources for uh, teaching. Um, if, for example, we use Zoom like this, it's very expensive. And it also took uh, a lot of data uh, for internet for our students. So we, we don't encourage uh, our lectures to, do, to use Zoom. What we do, for example, is uh, doing WhatsApp making WhatsApp group for studying and we make guidance for lectures and students uh, how you do a WhatsApp and Edmodo or something like that. It's a, a bit uh, cheaper than the uh, Zoom access, for example. And then the other thing we do is uh, we make, uh, we add more wastafel for hand wash like we add 60, 60 more of uh, hand soap, uh, I mean, what's up with hand soap there? So everyone is getting, coming to the university then can wash their hand first before entering uh, the building uh, like that. And then also, we uh, also cut the salary uh, of the staff, lectures, um, of our university uh, to collect the money and then uh, try to buy um, what you call it food for uh, our students who are still living uh, around the campus because they don't have uh, money to go back to their own islands, um, uh, to their village, uh, or maybe they don't want to go back to the village because of the access of the internet is really limited. And then we think about uh, that students. We also have like overseas students from, for example, Somalia. What, what should we do to, to these foreign students? Because it's impossible for them to go back uh, to their home. So, and it's also impossible for them to stay uh, inside the dormitory of the university because we have al already locked down the university. Then we try to find uh, homes for them uh, outside the, the university and give uh, food supply uh, to them through the cut uh, salary that we uh, do in, in, in our university. And then uh, right now, we also try to, um, what I mean, make policy, uh, making like online courses for uh, students, uh, I mean primary students, because some of the engagement program is running actually. Uh, we started uh, last January, um, but then it should be six months actually for going to the, to the community, doing literature uh, study for primary school students, 
But then because of the COVID-19 issue, the uh, program uh, cut in the middle suddenly. So what can we do to continue the program? And I'm, I'm very lucky because in our K4C, we have like a UD, uh, Herney, who have a brilliant idea what, what will they do in, in this situation. And they make a very good, um, like, uh, what do you call it, um, poster. They, they, they send it online to the primary student uh, saying about how you can wash your hand to, to avoid the, the virus and etc. Uh, our friend also in K4C, Mahir, for example, provide online, uh, what do you call it, consultation for family, uh, like to how you dealing uh, with uh, staying at home, like, because it's, it's not easy to stay at home the whole day, uh, 24 hours, usually we go out doing something, and now everyone at the house, like, if you have big house, it's, it's okay then, what? What if your house is small and then you meet every time? So it's getting tension in your, in your family. Like then uh, Mahir and, and friends uh, try to give a free consultation online for how you're dealing with a family issue. I think uh, there's some of the activity that I can share you uh, uh, with uh, my university. And also the last thing maybe I, I would like to inform from the salary that we got from uh, our staff of the university staff, we also try to buy uh, people protective equipment and then send them to uh, local uh, hospitals because that's the major issue uh, at the first time in our country, uh, the equipment is uh, not ready because uh, it's, it's, we, we don't prepare, even the mask like uh, we don't have it enough uh, it's getting very expensive and hard to to find so actually we from the money we collected then we buy the uh, people uh, protective equipment and send it also to the regions where we have a community engagement uh, program so i think uh, it's 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 really interesting what uh, Dr. Raja said uh, to us about uh, acting local uh, with it, with our situation but but I think from our webinar today, I, I, I can feel how important it is to in, in global uh, uh, area also that we work together. This is impacted uh, to all of us. Uh, it's it's sent a message, the COVID-19 sends the message to us actually, uh, we live in, in the same world. So we need to, to work together to, to solve uh, our problem even though we, we can act uh, locally with, uh, based on our situation. I think that, that's all what I can say, Nandita. I give it back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vahida. Thank you very much. Uh, let me now invite uh, 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 Rita Ji, Dr. Rita Venugopal from uh, the hub in Raipur in India. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tandon, Nandita. Hi, everyone. It is nice to see Mozambi, Ashira, Wahida, great, uh, and Shuman, Minali, Manju. Uh, uh, this is a great, uh, great event that we uh, all came together after our cohort. And uh, we met uh, many people afterwards also, but then uh, it is a great uh, meeting. Uh, Talking about, talking about Corona, I think uh, the Corona, the travel of Corona or story of Corona uh, reaching to my country, my state, my district, my uh, surroundings is the same as it is everywhere. So it is a global story and local story. So we are together, I mean, uh, the same uh, way we are thinking about the corona because it is reaching everybody in the same way. Now, uh, the actions taken as Mozambique said, uh, there are uh, the ways they, they, uh, the government uh, took care of uh, the things that are very, uh, I mean, it is appreciable. And uh, in case of our government, uh, every, everybody, everyone knows that it has been taken proper care of. And uh, locally, when I talk about Chhattisgarh, uh, the government is taking proper care and uh, uh, AIMS and other uh, medical institutions are working. 
uh, university teachers are contributing towards uh, 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 CM relief fund, PM relief fund, and other than that, so many uh, NGOs and uh, uh, private institutions are working for providing food and facilities to uh, the needy. Uh, everyone knows these stories. But uh, when we talk about the university, as it was locked down since uh, 24, 21st of March, uh, at, in the earlier phase, we could not do because it was all uh, shut down and uh, could not thought, could not think what to do. But then uh, uh, slowly everybody thought that we can conduct courses on uh, online courses and uh, uh, government took initiative and the universities uh, took initiative and uh, we are doing rigorous uh, online uh, courses by various means. So um, when we are doing online courses, so we also thought that uh, we should um, do something with the CVPR group because we have a certificate course in our university. So I will talk very specific to uh, the university and uh, the Center for Women's Studies in our university. So as Nandita said, it is Sangwari. Sangwari mean, means friend. So going together or going along with others. Uh, with community members. Uh, this is the uh, thought behind the name of the uh, center, uh, name of the hub. So CBPR, in CBPR hub, I'll just brief that we are doing a certificate course. And this is, this, as Nandita said, this is the second uh, set of course this year we are running. And uh, though the uh, participants or the students are uh, few in numbers, but then we are doing the course. Mm. There, there are so many things to be done during this COVID uh, crisis. So we were talking to Nandita that we have, we will have some webinar, webinar like thing with the students so that they get into touch uh, uh, with the things going around and we can understand the other herbs what they are doing. Uh, apart from doing a certificate course this year in the board of studies of the university, we thought that we will have a uh, choice-based credit system, that is uh, uh, elective subject of CBPR for all the students. I mean, uh, students who are studying physics, chemistry, who, whoever is interested. So this is a one semester, uh, four credit, credit course. So um, we already passed this uh, in board of studies. Uh, we cannot have a full course of uh, uh, mentors training like course for uh, uh, elective or, or optional paper, but then we can have, have some introductory part of CBPR uh, so that uh, the students come to, I mean, just they uh, get acquainted with this uh, area of research so that community-based participatory research can uh, become familiar for the students who are uh, not doing this uh, at this stage. So uh, th th this is the step we have taken and we were plan we, we planned that this course, we can start from the next session, but I don't know whether uh, we'll be able to start uh, in the next session because it is a uh, elective subject. There is no, uh, there is not much of formality which we have to do. Uh, it is only uh, that we have to pass the course from the end of studies. So when I thought of this, uh, including in the, um, um, as a credit for other students, uh, students of other subjects, uh, I, we also thought earlier also we had discussed does this topic or a, a, a unit of community-based participatory research will uh, will try to include in the syllabus of PhD or MPhil student so that the coursework of uh, PhD uh, includes uh, at least one unit of community-based participatory research. And this, I could uh, do it from the Faculty of Arts where, was, where I was a member. I could convince the uh, members of chairperson of other subjects to uh, at least include a unit of uh, CBPR into the uh, syllabus of coursework. So theoretically, everybody agreed and uh, they, they required a uh, I mean, content of course for uh, them to be included in that subject. So this is this is to achievement which uh, uh, our hub uh, is going ahead with uh, community-based participatory research. 
now for uh, present scenario there there are so many uh, ideas which are coming up because we are locked up in at home so there are issues which can be uh, 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 when we talk about community home is a part of community so the issues which are inside the home personally i feel in our culture the household work has to be done by the family member at female family member so here we can we can see a shift over of uh, take, changing responsibility as because of lockdown we have no uh, helpers to help at home so uh, change over has taken place and we can uh, we can uh, we can monitor this uh, how the change has taken place so this was some idea i, I was discussing with nandita we can have a small survey with our students at least our students who are living um, in the rural areas or in the cities also what kind of changes have uh, we are observing when we are locked down at home so uh, yesterday i also i said we uh, we have a we have a free toll number 181 where all domestic uh, violence are reported to one at one a single number and we have a sakhi center so the report from sakhi center and one at one is that the level of domestic violence is less in chatisgarh in chatisgarh as well as there is less of drug abuse so these are few uh, i mean positive things which i have observed and i suppose the students can take small surveys and we can teach them uh, in this direction to conduct some uh, community based uh, activities during this uh, period of time thank you so much for um, thank you thank you so much uh, rita ji uh, let me see now we have a number of other people who uh, um, who are around here i would also like later on my colleague uh, anshuman to say a few words later uh david uh, uh, would you like to uh, say a few words then i'll come to madhura ji i can see her there david david monk uh, yes hello thank you so much and hi everybody um i'll just uh i'll just add a little bit on to what uh, professor okunjuro has already said so i'm at guru university working um in the hub uh for professor okunjuru um so what our hub has done we have some community members that are also participating in the um in the special task force uh the professor mentioned um uh, a couple of things that have come out of that is we've done some some surveys uh through the task force um in the community to see that who are the people so some of the biggest impacts are in fact the uh the the people that are that are eating uh, on a daily basis right uh more on a weekly basis perhaps that whose businesses have been shut down so we've been uh we did a, we went into the community and we're doing some work um doing surveys about seeing what is the the food viability and and how much food people have so that's one thing that we have participated in doing and and working on uh and that we're continuing to doing and yesterday we were involved in some food distribution as well with uh, wheelbarrows into one area that was uh uh that is particularly vulnerable um another piece is one of our community members um has uh one of our uh, our hub uh community partners um has uh he he's developed this with his with the uh, the organization has developed a uh, a system of recycling plastic and converting it into taking water bottles and, and coke bottles and things like this and they convert them into um tiles for um for construction and and uh and various things and uh so he very quickly they very quickly reacted and they made these visors for hospital workers uh and for other people that they've been distributing through the through the task force as well so there's a a good deal of innovation that's coming out of this um as well one of our youth uh we have sort of a youth attachment to the to the hub and one of them uh immediately has uh he he used to as a small business make liquid soap and he had stopped but he immediately uh acquired the materials that he needed to make liquid soap and this whole house is just a whole uh, which isn't so big but it's just a a factory of liquid soap 
which he has been distributing, uh, working with uh, the task force and also with the World Health Organization, um, distributing uh, uh, 200 liters, I think, this week to a refugee camp uh, that's close by. So these are some things that we're seeing community and people coming together, which is very, very, very nice. Um, another, another piece that we, uh, that we observed um, is uh, the bringing online. I think that other people have, have uh, spoken about a lot, kind of forcing people online. And as we're kind of moving around with our different research and projects that are going on, here are a lot of people who don't have connections uh, or don't have the capacity or the understanding to move online. So in the future, that's something that we can maybe, I think, think about working towards and, and working through. But in the meantime, uh, people are kind of being pushed into trying these things. And one example of this is uh, we have this, uh, the, the youth group that we work here in, uh, work with here in, in Gulu. We've recently been making some connections uh, to other universities through this youth group, through uh, participatory action research practices. Uh, so we've been working with Makarere and uh, the uh, Institute for Lifelong Learning and Distance Education there, and African Rural University and um, uh, Chambogo University to, to make stronger links, uh, stronger links within, this, um, uh, within this community of youth around specific issues. Then we were beginning to write a grant together around uh, uh, gender-based violence on campus, on campuses, and uh, Nandita was hosting a listening circle um, around gender-based violence, and very quickly uh, we were able to join into this listening circle, and then it, it evolved into, because of technical difficulties, a whole other discussion around COVID and what we can do as adult educators, because we're all adult educators, most of us are adult educators in this group. Uh, uh, what we can do specifically in relation to uh, gender and it's a conversation that is uh, really blossomed, I think, and is continues to uh, emerge on, on WhatsApp. And I think we'll have another uh, grouping uh, coming up soon. So that's just some small pieces that I thought I could add into. Thank you. Thanks, uh, David. Very, very helpful. Madhuraji, uh, your hub based in Jaipur, what are you doing? What is happening? What are you thinking of doing? Welcome. Good afternoon to all. And I thank Priya and especially Dr. Rajeshji for arranging this webinar. We started our hub three years back. And uh, to start with, we have started uh, open elective in our university. So this is the third semester we are operating with open elective. And initially, even for the students of architecture of fourth year, we have adopted uh, five villages surrounding our university. And uh, accordingly, the issues were discussed with the villagers and then we tried to solve their problems. So open elective at present, we are operating in our university. And in this COVID-19 situation, we are at home from 23rd of March, but our university, uh, the chemistry lab, has uh, prepared one organic sanitizer. And other students of uh, engineering, they have also prepared one app, which will tell you for washing your hands, how, much, how frequently and all these COVID instructions. So that app is also developed by our students. And uh, now I think uh, we have discussed last month that we will arrange orientation for our faculty. So is it possible to have one kind of uh, seminar of orientation to all of our faculty members in this lockdown? So we can do that uh, if you say agree to that. And uh, in future, what we are thinking to have some one joint venture together and uh, we will introduce this uh, one unit of CBPR to our uh, a PhD scholars. So I had already discussion with uh, discussed with our PhD coordinator, and that is in the process. So I'm trying to add at least one unit of CBPR. We are already running a research methodology courses in our university for all PhD scholars, which is common across all the disciplines. So in that, uh, we can add one module of CBPR. 
and then we can go for certificate course also next our plan is uh, to propose one certificate course and uh, first to orient the um, faculty for cbpr and then to propose a certificate course for the surrounding people or for the region thank you thank you that's very very helpful i hope you all are safe and well in jaipur and all your students and colleagues are are keeping well um let me let me invite uh, anshuman many of you know anshuman uh, my colleague because uh, in priya also uh, we have been doing certain things maybe anshuman can tell us uh, what he has been uh, doing <clears throat> anshuman can you thank you sir Ah. So, as you are aware that uh, the situation around the world is not different from what Mozami and uh, David and others have explained. Uh, so, we have a similar situation here in India as well. And uh, as you know that the 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 like we have over like 130 uh, million people. So, the you can see the kind of scale at which we are operating, and we are having this uh, lockdown. uh situation uh since 21st of march uh initially it was uh for 3 weeks till 14th of april and then it got extended to another 3 weeks till 3rd of may uh though we had we don't have that much cases as compared to the uh cases happening in europe or us or other parts of the world uh and uh, thankfully it due to this lockdown kind of early uh, decision taken by our government uh, we we are we are on the on the the safer side but uh, you never know like when this lockdown is over what will happen and uh, we are we are moving after that uh, <clears throat> regarding uh, what is happening around the country is basically you might also have uh, heard uh, through media or through stories or through like uh, various other platforms that the most affected people here are migrant laborers those who are uh, working in informal sectors uh, in in big cities in metro cities or in uh, second or third tier cities so we have like uh, there are no uh, standard government estimates available uh, but there are more than like um, 10 million uh, migrant workers are actually uh, stranded over places uh, maybe at the borders of the states or maybe uh, uh, where they are working uh, so government various state governments and the national government is trying hard to uh, support these stranded workers uh, but uh, not uh, without the support of civil society organizations uh, it is not possible to reach out to all the uh, not only the migrant workers but also the people those who are living in informal settlements the urban poor uh, the poorest of the poor the uh, homeless people and other uh, similar kind of vulnerable people or the <coughs> marginalized people those who are actually uh, uh, feeling very bad uh, because of this uh, lockdown situation uh, because they don't have any livelihood options they don't have any food they don't have any many uh, of the uh, these uh, uh, people don't even have shelter uh, so this is the situation and uh, in priya what we have started like uh, uh, when uh, when this lockdown was started and the news news are actually pouring in regarding this uh, the the way the migrant workers are actually trying to reach out to their homes and villages so there is a kind of reverse migration kind of situation and there is a lot of confusion and mess up like Uh, and states are not able to handle this situation so what we have started is immediately we have uh, started some uh, uh, online uh, social media groups through whatsapp and other medium social media mediums we have roped in uh, our, our network of civil society organizations across the country into that and uh, we have started pushing various government notification various support systems available through civil society organizations uh and we have connected all these uh, strings together so that uh the right information could be reached out to the people where it is required and 
that would be helpful for them. Uh, similarly, like uh, as you know, that we are organizing a lot of these webinars around this COVID-19 situation. So uh, recently, we already have like five uh, webinars uh, ranging from the uh, how how uh, this uh, lockdown situation is actually uh, becomes uh, difficult for the women in distress and uh, how they're feeling, what is uh, violence against women is happening around. Uh, what about the urban and formal uh, sector is happening? What is happening uh, with the migrant laborers? What is happening in the Panchayati Raj or the local governance institutions? So a lot of other webinars are also piled, uh, in, in, uh, are coming actually in the, in the coming days and the coming weeks. Uh, so we are, we are playing this role as a, as a knowledge institution and we are uh, trying to understand and disseminating that information to all the our partners, all the other civil society organizations, like-minded uh, uh, organizations, agencies, uh, academia especially, uh, and we are reaching out to them to uh, how to build a common kind of understanding about the situation and uh, what what learnings we can draw from this this kind of situation and how we can become future ready for that. So that is an important lesson we are drawing and we are disseminating. The most important thing, uh, which I think, which is more relevant to this group, the Knowledge for Hub, uh, this group are, is basically uh, how do universities can connect to the civil society organizations? How do universities can connect to the, uh, to the government? Because this kind of situation demands a lot of knowledge generation also not in terms of demystification of various government orders uh, but to reaching out to the most vulnerable sections of the society through uh, use of information technology health legal advice legal aid uh, as you said Mozami, that uh, your government has already had this national helpline for women so uh, what somebody needs to monitor that whether it is reaching out to the right person and whether they are actually able to help these uh, people or the communities uh, with this thing. You also talked about the way uh, uh, the, the government is trying to reaching out to each and every uh, vulnerable person uh, in, in Malaysia. So that those learnings are important. How that is happening actually, that is more important to understand uh, and how some of these lessons can be replicated into into other parts of the, 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 the country like India. So I think role of this, this group is very important in uh, light of this. And uh, we definitely, uh, Priya will be, uh, will uh, provide all of you that platform so that we can reach out to maximum people we can uh, through our network and through our, uh, uh, not only the civil society network, but also through the academic network. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anshuman. Um, you know, yesterday uh, we had a very interesting uh, discussion in the first webinar as well, and uh, where we talked about how all the hubs can come together and what, what can we do together. And one of the things was looking at the gender uh, impacts of COVID-19. And domestic violence is one of the issues that we spoke about. Afterwards, uh, you know, I had a discuss. I was talking to Irma, and Irma had a very interesting. Uh, you know, they have started a very interesting uh, initiative uh, from their university under the K4C Hub. So, Irma, uh, I would like to invite you to uh, to share with us a little bit about what you're doing in the space of child sexual abuse and uh, violence against women through the teachers. Irma, are you there? Yes, Irma. So what we were talking about yesterday, if you could share a little bit about what you're doing. Hmm. Well, <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> hi. Uh, well, I, I'm not prepared to, to talk about it, but I, I was... Uh, talking with Nandita about an initiative we are uh, uh, doing with students of the Faculty of Education. Uh, we are work working with them to 
uh, to talk with families of their students and with them uh, we are we are trying to uh, to talk about what is happening in the in the in their students homes then we we uh, we are work, work we are wa working with parents by whatsapp message to support them in homeschooling for example and in in that uh, support we try to ask them we we try to ask mothers uh, what what are happening in our homes about uh, communication and uh, the way that they are uh, facing this time of COVID-19 and how do they uh, uh, establish rules and how do they uh, face th this, this kind of stress situations. Then we have uh, information about what is happening with uh, abuse and m another kind of um, situations that put in risk children and, and women. And we are trying to, to train teachers to give a response about what to do in that cases. That's the, the, the way we are trying to, uh, to support and to help families to, uh, to be better and, and well, that's, that's our, our, that's the way we are, we are working on gender issues. Thank you, Irma. Thank you. Good to see you because I'm sure it is past mid, way past midnight yes. back in yes. back in back in uh, Bogota in Colombia. Uh, good to yes. see you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I I noticed that we have uh, we have Karen uh, here from South Africa. Karen, are you uh, still there? It would be good to hear your uh, your. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, there you are, Karen. Yeah. Say a few words good. about what's going on in your part. Yes, good morning from South Africa. And um, we are in the South African hub where we are partnering with Northwest University and the University of the Free State. So um, at this moment at the university last night, Leslie spoke um, on the group um, when we had the first webinar. And yes, the message is quite the same than all of the people across the globe, all of our partners in the K4C hubs, we all have the same issues. But this morning I've been inspired um, by hearing the feedback from other partners from locally. And um, um, in this, we, we are also locked down at the university. We are also planning how to work towards a phased in coming back. One of the biggest challenges that we have is the previous already oppression, or I can't say really oppression, but the, the, the disconnect between the poor and the, the, the middle class and the rich people, in the sense that um, all of us are um, being challenged, will we have a job? We don't know. Um, it's an uncertain time. And, and even us at universities, we are thinking, so if we cannot go on with this, um, because our students, um, we've done a survey at the university, 40% of our students do not have access to internet. So um, some of our service learning programs um, needs to be stopped. So I'm working on a project or, or like information sharing with our service learning lecturers where I'm inspiring them that we can move towards e-service learning in the sense of developing knowledge products where our students can become our agents of change and where they are in the community and um, 
then uh, to the disciplinary outcomes that they need to have in their modules, how can that be aligned with CBPR and um, enabling them also now to become the change agent in the community? So um, we are planning a, a learning festival every year in September, we have a learning festival. So we cannot have this as a physical event now, so we want to move this to a virtual event. And so we are already thinking of how can we produce knowledge products that can be um, shared in the community because knowledge is the first step towards bringing change, creating knowledge. And I'm really, um, we, I, I've written quite a few questions there that you can see. And um, I'm thinking about the ethical challenges that we have for doing CBPR. So, if the, if the initiative comes from the community, from the uh, a core of the family to do their own CBPR in the family and um, to the challenges and the reality that we are living with. So what can we do? Um, then they become the, the initiators of the research. And then from us as university, we can then just support. Because if we start from university and we want ethical clearance, this is a very big challenge, I think, and people will not understand about it. So yes, I'm, 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 I'm asking the question of exploring this as a, as a proposition. So in this sense, we can do the training for our youth for CBPR, and they become the change agents. Mm. Thanks, thanks, Karen. No, very interesting questions as well, because uh, these are different times. I want to uh, request my colleague, you know, Jigme, who has been supporting um, all this, writing to you all, and she has been supporting UNESCO Chair Hub here, located in with me. Jigme, say a few words and introduce yourself. So people see your face and connect with you as well. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm Jigme, and I'm basically working with Priya, as uh, Dr. Tanjan specified. Um, so I would basically try want to use, I think this entire discussion has been really engaging and I believe that all of us have actually learned quite a lot from the experiences that all of us are facing in different parts of the world. Um, so, and I know that there's quite a lot more that we can actually discuss. So with, with this initiate, uh, with this in mind, the UNESCO chair has basically launched a discussion forum um, and uh, this will be accessible to all of you. Um, I'll be sharing the link for the UNESCO chair website and to reach this discussion forum, you basically will have to go on to the uh, chair website. And if you go on the page, you'll basically be looking under the KFOC tab and uh, you'll be able to find a discussion forum. All you need to do to actually share your experiences and participate in this forum is to create an account and uh, join in to the conversations. You can use this space to share your ideas, like different interventions, the local responses to the pandemic, as well as like the ways in which we can move forward together and uh, learn to live in the new normal as it has been put out. So I hope to see that today's discussion is continued forward on this platform. Thank you. Thanks, Jigme. Thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> whatever comes out of these webinars and some ideas, uh, our teams will post it in that in that K4C discussion forum uh, later this week, early next week. So uh, I noticed that Noor, Noor is here. Uh, Noor, um, uh, how are you? Would you like to say a few words? Noor Wahidi. Jigme, Jigme, you have to unmute uh, Noori. Uh, maybe, maybe Nandita, you can invite Asara. She, she was here also, Asara. Yes, she is here. Asara is here. Uh, Asara maybe she can, can, she can uh, share yes. a few words. She was just here, Asaira, oh. and I was actually chatting. Oh, there, yeah, yeah, there she is. Okay, yeah. so she's going to share a little bit about uh, what she's doing and what her students are doing. Yeah, Asaira. Hi, hi, everybody. I uh, hope everybody is uh, doing well. I think uh, uh, earlier on, Muzaimi already shared about uh, uh, Malaysian uh, universities and also USM uh, initiatives. So since you are coming from same university but different campus. I, uh, so maybe I'll just um, uh, share a bit on what we are doing uh, in the main campus in Penang. Um, well, uh, in, in my own uh, what uh, 
more focus on uh, the teaching because uh, at the moment that's what uh, we are looking at um, in terms of uh, uh, addressing our own students' needs because uh, even though that um, uh, our students were, most of them went back, you know, I think um, uh, more than 80% went back to their hometown. So we had uh, to actually did a, a lot of surveys and trying to find out their ability to uh, continue our teaching and learning online. So. But uh, what I want to share uh, today, maybe just a little bit on some of uh, our experience uh, with our uh, assignments, because coming from um, a geography, I'm a geographer, so we do a lot of our assignments with a community, going out, uh, doing surveys, and also field work. So uh, with this MCO, we find it very uh, difficult uh, to conduct uh, and also meet uh, the, the, uh, the requirements of the teaching and also learning experience of the students. So some of the ways maybe uh, is either uh, we contact the, the agencies and find uh, whether they can entertain uh, online discussion and also, uh, also co uh, contact, had to use some personal contact in, in this um, uh, situation, whether they can uh, participate in the students, uh, for example, uh, assignments, you know, for example, the, the residential association in certain areas, whether they would be uh, able to actually uh, let the students survey and, and uh, use their uh, uh, network in terms of WhatsApp group or Facebook uh, and, and uh, help the students to complete their assignments. So I guess this way it, it is not a risk. Uh, it is a part of the research assignments for the undergraduates, but uh, in, in a way, uh, they are also exposed to other methods because now we cannot go and face-to-face -face, uh, experience. They had to actually, uh, we use other means uh, to, to help them uh, to also uh, get a response. But of course, uh, doing this, we need to adjust and, and uh, adapt to the uh, situation in terms of uh, research ethics and also research methodology. I think maybe uh, it would uh, also apply to other uh, courses and other um, research, uh, social research as well. How do we actually um, look at our research methodology to, to to meet uh, the requirements, yeah, to, to meet the ethics and things like that, to make sure that the sampling method and and also the requirements are met. So this is a big challenge also for the students because they are writing their thesis, they are going to write and, and also uh, submit their, their research project. So I think um, in, in that way, we do work uh, with uh, uh, the NGOs and also the, the civil society uh, with the, and, and they are actually open uh, to, to, to help. Uh, maybe after this, we can continue to look at uh, this type of uh, engagement with them uh, in other uh, areas as well. And um, another one is uh, to those that are still in campus. Uh, I think uh, many have, have shared uh, to Wahida also what, what uh, their university has done to, to those foreign students that uh, did not get a chance to go back home, especially in Malaysia, in, in uh, USM, those coming from the East uh, Malaysia, in Sabah and Sarawak, in, in uh, Borneo Island. So most of them are still in campus. So we see a lot of students uh, uh, actually uh, do their own um, and organize themselves and uh, how uh, the university also help them uh, in terms of uh, surviving in campus. So uh, that is, um, oh, I think that's all <laughs> that uh, at the moment that I, I can share. Thank you. Thank you. Nandita, I think uh, you may say a few words, tell about your story MFF, what Martha Farrell Foundation done, and then we close the webinar. Leave it in your hands, Nandita. All right, thank you, sir. Um, I think the discussion was very interesting yesterday's and today's. Uh, 
you know we talked about uh, i think what is interesting about today's discussions is how we've talked about uh, covid-19 everyone's talking about covid-19 being a global issue uh, we've also said that but we've added another dimension to it today we've called it a local reality uh, there is a global dimension to it but it is a local reality and uh, you know so we all need to uh, work together uh, you know it challenges uh, you know covid 19 also is going to challenge the way you see bpr we've always talked about the heart about emotions about people interaction being with people so it's also going to challenge the way that we are going to be working uh, in, in this area so we have to think about new ways of doing it um, how are we going to do that so that is one thing that we discussed um, and uh, you know uh, the another thing that we discussed about was the new normal okay so what is the new normal going to be you know in cbpr we have uh, we have been taught i am also a first cohort product so we have been taught to always question the status quo always question the norm and see uh, is this the truth is there something beyond this whose truth is this uh, you know so uh, so what are we doing so when we are saying that there is um, no you know by domestic violence cases have gone down is it the truth or is it that we have not been able to really you know reach out to those women who don't have access to telephones you're living in confined spaces everybody can hear you talk can i pick up the phone and make a call you know so whose reality is it that we have whose that data is whose um so those are some things that we can do we work with architecture students we have a huge crisis about homelessness about space we're talking about physical distance can we look at uh, looking at uh, planning through a gender lens what is post covid going to look at you know analyzing all of that so and we have these issues homelessness issues lack of space across wherever we are from so how do we do that as a unit as a community of uh, you know k4c um, uh, k4c mentors uh, you know karen spoke about the youth very very uh, important because we all as in the university we have we have the youth with us you know and they are with us we teach them every day so irma gave a really interesting example about how how uh, the the students of the education faculty are using that space of you know maybe um, teaching parents to home school but also asking them to be aware of certain things and being letting them know that we are there if you need us so how do we create that support system that was such an interesting thing that she uh, spoke about so i want to tell you a little bit about what we are doing at the martha farrell foundation as most of you know uh, we work with young uh, people and we also work with uh, domestic workers now uh, our government is giving a lot of uh, you know uh, essential services that are available through civil society and through the efforts of the government uh, you know uh, certain you know, money is going into certain uh, to bank accounts but the question is is it so who's asking the question is it uh, is everybody in the last mile being covered with these essential services uh, is everybody uh, not hungry anymore is everybody safe so who is asking these questions so what we are doing is uh, we are trying so we know where they are you know the other day there was a story uh, it's just across the road from where i am the ones who have come to the field uh, you know in gurgaon where domestic workers live uh, a young uh, a man with three small children committed suicide because he couldn't feed his children you know, you know for three days that uh, the family was hungry um, you know so uh, so that is the area that we are working with so what and there is no service now we are in also the almost the sixth week of of lockdown no food there no food there so what we are doing is we are uh, connecting uh, you know essential services to people who really need it Uh, so we are linking them that's what we are not giving the food but we are linking it the services are there they also don't know who to feed anymore so we are doing that linkage building and we are also doing importantly the stories the stories so the reality to say no you haven't reached every last mile so domestic workers are recording their own stories they are uh, reaching out to other domestic workers now we have uh, you know construction workers we have other migrant workers women just coming in telling the stories to each other that is being collated into a database they are creating the database and they coming back to us and saying these are the you know hungry people these are the ones who have been abused and that's where we are linking the services so they are doing it themselves and what are we doing with young people 
they realize it's a huge strain on the mental mental health of young people as well. They're also in abusive circumstances in the home. How are we going to support them? So we've started uh, rooftop, you know, in CBPR, we use all forms of, uh, you know, all, all types of uh, art or forms of expression. We use uh, poetry with them. Uh, we call it a rooftop poetry, uh, where we encourage them to go out or go to the roof, uh, you know, talk on WhatsApp. We create groups. We talk to them, teach them how to write, how to express. And we have a series of rooftop poetry. Uh, we can share it with you. It's in Hindi, but we can translate and share with you. Uh, we've been doing that with lots of uh, people. We form groups, support groups where they are coming and sharing so you know and we've started now a survey but another issue that we have uh, raised um Everybody's talking about domestic violence, but uh, what about the other forms of violence that women are, are facing right now uh, in times of COVID-19, in, in times of work from home situations? So as CBPR, uh, uh, you know, uh, practitioners, we need to see uh, what is not being covered. So work from home situation means your home is your workplace. Workplace boundaries are completely defined. So how is that being managed? How is that being handled? So we started a, a conversation around that. We've done a couple already, and we're doing a, a one more on Saturday where we are uh, you know, getting lawyers and police to come because the police are also saying that these are inflated numbers. We're not getting any reporting, but we know that there is increase. So how, how are we going to address that? So those are some of the, we are doing much more, but these are some of the small uh, you know, examples of what we're doing. And uh, we're really happy to collaborate and take across all the hubs, uh, the things that we are doing. And I think it will be fantastic if we can all come up with, uh, you know, uh, something joint to say, these are what young people, you know, rooftop poetry during COVID-19 about young people, what they are feeling and what they expect post COVID situations to be like and with women. Uh, what about uh, commercial sex workers? What about LGBTQI? Um, you know, so who's going to raise these issues? Um, it's going to, and who's, how are, how are those voices going to be raised? It's you and us and the students you're sitting with. So um, I think, um, I think, sir, um, that is. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I think uh, that's very helpful. We are running out of time. Thank you all. Uh, great to see you all and uh, keep well and let us uh, explore what we can do bilaterally, trilaterally, collectively in the time ahead and uh, maybe uh, more uh, in-country conversations, maybe more bilateral conversations, maybe some joint initiatives will emerge. Thank you. Thank you all and stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you all. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Bye. Noor. Noor just joined. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see everybody. Yes. Bye. Bye. The same thing happened yesterday. Nobody wanted to say bye-bye. <laughs> so we just hung around. <laughs> Bye. 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 Nice to have met you, Muzaimi. Same here. Same here. Uh, Karen. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Stay safe. David, we'll get together. I'll send you the report. Thank you all.